To make the ashes for Ash Wednesday, we use the palms from the year before, the Palm Sunday the year before. And so this year I went to get down the box I have in my office labeled palms and I got it down and when I opened it up, it was empty. Because of course last year we only had virtual Palm Sunday. And this entire year has been so difficult. It has been filled with turmoil. It has been filled with quarantine. And I think many of us, just like the Palm Box, arrive at Lent feeling empty. And I want you to remember as we enter this season that God is the one who fills the empty. God heals the brokenhearted. God raises the dead. That it is out of the ashes, out of the cross, that new life is made. Coming into this Ash Wednesday with COVID, I knew that we couldn't mark our foreheads with ashes. Uh, and so I came up with a plan for how we could mark ourselves with ashes rather than someone else doing it for us. And I bought all these tiny mirrors and uh, was going to put ashes in little cups. And of course, I was really excited about this brilliant plan. But you, you know how brilliant plans go. And now we are stuck in the middle of the coldest February I can remember. And all our services have gone virtual and all I'm left with are a whole bunch of tiny little mirrors. And yet thinking about mirrors has reminded me of 1 Corinthians 13. You know, 1 Corinthians, when we first think of 1 Corinthians 13, we always think of it as the love chapter, the chapter that's read at weddings. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't keep a record of wrong. But, you know, Paul wasn't thinking about a husband and a, a wife when he wrote that passage. God was, but Paul was thinking about God. And he writes in that passage as he moves talking about love, he says that all kinds of things are passing away. Even prophecy is going to disappear. But these three things will remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these 
That's how he ends the chapter, is love. Right before he says that about love, Paul talks about mirrors. He says, currently we are looking in a mirror dimly. Now, don't think about our modern mirrors that are really pretty clear. Think instead about a first century mirror that would have been distorted, that wouldn't have reflected all the light. It would have literally been dim. And he says, currently we are looking in a mirror dimly, but someday we're going to see. And what will we see? Well, that's why Paul wrote this chapter about love. Because when you see clearly, love pours out. And interesting, he doesn't stop the verse there. Someday we're going to see clearly just as we are clearly seen. See, God right now sees you. God right now knows you. And what did God do? God loves you. God sacrificed for you. That's what this season that we're moving towards is all about. A movement to the cross, a movement to resurrection. God's love poured out because he saw you. And as we move into this season, more than any other year, I feel like we need to be reminded to look clearly at ourselves. Not as the world sees us. You know, we have mirrors that are great right now that, that reflect as clear as you can possibly hope for. And yet we use those mirrors to find all our faults. We look every morning at the mirror wondering, what did I do to get my hair sticking up all these directions, you know? And I need to shave and I have the zit and I need to, you know, oh my gracious, there's stuff in my teeth. And, you know, we spend time in the mirror perfecting ourselves, correcting all those faults. We use the mirror for entirely the wrong purposes when it comes to how God sees us. See, God sees us and loves us. And as we move into Lent, I want you to carry that in your heart. I, was, I always look forward to Ash Wednesday. I love the service. I love the symbolism of the ashes being marked in the cross because it is out of the ashes, out of death, that God brings new life. And not, yet God isn't as worried about our foreheads being marked. God wants our hearts to be marked. And so whether you are at home or in the car, wherever you're watching this, you can mark your heart with the love of God. And I want to challenge you to do something real specific. I don't have ashes to give you. I don't have tiny mirrors to give you. Um, but, but I want you to write something on your mirror at home. I want you to just, whatever mirror you use, you wake up and you get ready at whatever mirror that you look in at yourself the most, I want you to write on that mirror. And I want you to write, God sees me and God loves me. Because when you look in that mirror too often, you're judging yourself. But if we could see clearly, Paul says, oh man, we'd write a beautiful love chapter just like Paul. But we are seen clearly by God. And wherever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you think you are, whatever you think you've done, God loves you. And as we move into this Lent, let us every day remember that we are seen. Every day remember that we are loved. Look in that mirror, read those words and say, thank you. Thank you, God. And as we move towards Good Friday, the cup set before Christ was you. And he went to the cross for you. And as we move towards Good Friday, as we move towards Saturday where he is in the tomb, we will be ready to go with the women on Easter and discover new life. We're going to end with a song by Joni on the violin, Turn Your Eyes to Jesus. And as she plays this song, I want you to close your eyes and imagine Jesus. Turning your eyes to him and imagine how he looks at you. How he looks at you and loves you. How he sees you and loves you.